guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, I am in buckets and we are trenching and moving forward with our electrical and our water and our gas and all of our utility lines. I'll explain more of that later, but for right now we are digging and making a long, long line of dirt. You guys, the minimum for this trench is 36 inches. I'm 5'6", and this thing is almost over my head. And once we backfill this, we will actually be building on top of it. So we will have plenty of clearance. We don't have to worry about it. But I really want to go as deep as the tractor will let me right here. Look at them rocks. <sighs> because if your utilities are just the bare minimum, that's OK. But if you're planning on like putting sprinkler systems in or who knows what we'll end up putting in here later on when the shop comes in it'll dig down a little bit so lots of little things are going to be coming in and i want to make sure that my utilities are never going to be compromised so i'm burying them as deep as i possibly can and the beauty of it is it actually lines up between here and the house if i submerge this as deep as i can it gives me the straightest way i use the least amount of cable and so it really is the best thing to do and since I'm the operator of the tractor and I have nothing but time, we'll dig it deep. Well, this is an unexpected surprise. I came out to start digging on power to bring it to the house and city guys just showed up to start energizing that transformer. That's insane. There's 7,200 volts coming into that transformer alone. That's so much. That's so much. And really when it all breaks down, we'll be at 220 volts coming into the house. Um, but I think it's pretty exciting that that's how much they have to bring down. This is all they run. That main cable runs 7,200 volts, it's insulated. And then the little copper wires around it, they band together to make their neutral. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he has the same pose. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the it's the the islander in him. <laughs> you can't fight it. You can't. You guys, this trench is amazing, and I'm honestly getting pretty good hang of my controls. These controls are way different than anything I ever learned on. I learned on what we call cat controls or pilot controls. I learned on what we call cat controls or pilot controls. So it's just two joysticks. This one has four and it's a little bit different. Well, there's four joysticks and two pedals down below. You guys, we've hit a monumental spot. Our trench from our utilities all the way to the house is done. So now I'm just gonna dig a little bit next to the house, which is a little bit scary, thinking if I bump that foundation and crack it or anything like that, I'm in big trouble. But I think all the training that I've gotten out on the trench has prepared me for this. The utilities on this house will end up on the other side of this wall. The utility closet is there. So all of our utilities are gonna come in here. So all of the sleeves I put in at the back of the house to prepare myself, they're not gonna work. They could, but they're really long runs and it's too long for the electricity. And it just didn't make sense to dig two huge trenches when realistically one will work. I just have to bury them a particular way, which I'll show you in a little bit. But now we just gotta dig kind of this mound of dirt out of the way so that I can access here. And I'm gonna see if I can dig a little bit by this footing to uh, prep myself. Cause electrical and water are gonna go underneath there. This is the wire that is going to power our house. That is three strands of 350 KCML wire, which, what does that mean? That means that is a big enough gauge wire for this length of draw, which is almost 200 feet, to give us 200 amps at the house. It took us just a little bit of time to figure out what wire we wanted to use. Typical house from the meter into the house is what we call four aught. Um, and that, that really does work good enough. When you go such far draws, you have what we call voltage drop, which meaning if we had 200 amps back here at the meter, by the time we got to the house, it wouldn't be anywhere near that. And that's a problem. 
And so from the get-go, you just boost it up as heavy as you can, and we start going, and that's what we ran with. So all three strands are here, plus our ground, and now we're gonna start sleeving it on. Good morning, everybody. I am back working on this trench line and I gotta confess something. I'm not an expert at any of the things I'm doing. I'm an amateur, but at the end of the day, I try to just do it right. And if I didn't do it right, I will show you how I did it wrong and how I'm going to fix it and do it right. So I figure that makes me at least an honest amateur. Because I do not have the equipment um, to pull wire very long distances, especially that big of wire. These wires are ginormous. I mean, three of those, that's just so big. Because I don't have the equipment to pull that wire, I thought I'm gonna do it the way I did my house. Years ago, I redid the power at my house and I buried all of it instead of having it hanging above. And I didn't pull the wire then either. What I did was lay the wire out and sleeve the pipes over top, like so. We tried doing that yesterday, and the problem is, is this is a 200 plus feet pull. And getting that to run that was a nightmare. I did three of them, and I thought I was gonna die. It took me forever, and it just wasn't smart. And I thought, well, if that's what we gotta do, that's what we gotta do. But then I called a friend, and he said, well, okay, say you get them all done, you get it laid up, and you've got your extra wire sitting in the house, what are you gonna do to protect it so that no contractor hits it? Well, given I'm mostly the contractor here, I don't know what I would do to keep the framers off of it or anything like that, or to not cause problems with it. Because if we damage that wire, we've got to re-pull it. And this wire alone was $3,000. So I don't want to pay that again. So he said, what I would do is pull the sleeves that you've put on off, re-spool it, lay your conduit like normal, and we'll figure out how to pull it. So last night I was on the internet, I was on the phone with him, and we came up with some wire pulling equipment that we can rent. We found it, we gotta go out of the valley to rent it, but I think it's worth it, because it'll get pulled correctly. So, after all this work that it took to get these three stinking sleeves here, I'm just gonna be pulling them out. I'm not really thrilled about it, but it's just what we gotta do. Sleeves are all off, and I learned, because I'm a genius, I started out using the bell housing thinking the wider spot of the pipe with kind of that beveled edge would flow easier over the pipe. I was dead wrong. The bell housing, right at the very opening, has a sharp edge that kept catching on the wire, and that really troubled me, because I thought, man, if I damage this wire, I could have a short later on, I don't know, just a problem. The bell housing is the female end. When I pulled them backwards, I was pulling through the male end, and that has a small bevel inside and it allowed the wire to just flow through. So if I would have pulled them male end first, they would have flowed a lot better. So learn that. But I still think what we're gonna do is the right way. But I have to get this spool out of this trench with the remaining, you know, 50, 60 feet of both of those. And we gotta get it spooled back up. I, I just, I don't even know how this is gonna work. I don't even know how this is gonna work. And that's why I didn't, normally my dad's here to help me, but I thought, I mean, I can't put him through that. All that work we just put into yesterday and me undoing it right now. I was like, well, I better do this first in the morning, get it done and over with. Not sure how this is gonna work. We are getting work done. We've gotten the trench all the way done, all the wire back out, spooled back up, which I need to put in the trailer. I'm ready to start throwing some pipe together. I was even able to dig and kind of start connecting these. I didn't dig any closer because I didn't want to rip anything out or I don't know, undo anything. Hand digging 
that little bit won't be bad. But I was able to get my trench dug for gas. So our propane tanks will sit out here. Well will sit here. Electrical will sit there. Now there are guidelines for all of that. And you need to look in your area what the minimums are. I know they're a little different depending on where you live, but typically gas and electric have to be 24 inches apart. And water and electric have to be 12 inches apart. And water and gas just have to be kind of 12 inches apart. That one's kind of a, I guess gas and water doesn't really matter, but gas, water, and electrical, they have to be certain distances apart so that if there was a malfunction, um, it's not gonna cause problems later on. So that trench is 24 inches wide, electrical and water together on the same plane, they can be 12 inches apart. So they'll sit at the kind of bottoms of the trench. Then we'll backfill a little bit, put gas in, that'll be 24 inches from the electrical line and that meets standard and we'll run them all out to here. I really wanted to have all of my utilities set out here. So gas, water, and electrical are all just kind of combined. So I know where they're at. And because we're out in the middle of nowhere, you have to facilitate that somehow with a well, with the propane tanks that are gonna be kind of a big space taker. And I wanted to, to, since we had to do a transformer, I wanted that hidden as well. So all of it will be kind of hidden back over here, but it'll definitely be the utility section of the property. I believe I just did the coolest thing possible with my tractor. 